Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Women's Power Hour. And this is all part of the self-care series that we have been running. And my guest today is Hannah Schwertstra, who is a VA and founder of Balance VA Services. Hannah, welcome to the Women's Power Hour show. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Yvonne. It's uh, great to be here. Awesome. Fabulous. Um, well, of course, I think one of the wonderful things about the work that you do is um, is all around how you help save people time or help them to nurture their time and perhaps use it for other more pressing things. But before we get to that part of the discussion, it'd be really lovely to find out a little bit more about you, your journey, how you started your business. OK, thanks. Um, yep. Yeah, so I was working in various kinds of jobs and I always ended up in some kind of management or administration role or both together and then I realized that clearly that that meant something and that's probably what I should be doing with my time um I think I might have inherited that of my mum who um went to secretarial school when she was a youngster so I I worked in uh, various admin management roles and but there was something I knew I'd always wanted to have, have my own business um mm. I have come from like my father has his own business my brother has his own business my uncle had his own business I don't know there was just something about wanting to stand on my own two feet I suppose what I didn't realize in my naivety was that being a virtual assistant was actually something I could turn into a business yeah. so I kept looking at some sort of product that I could create and there was nothing because I can't create any products um, <laughs> but um, but doing organizing and helping people put systems and processes together and doing all of that that's what I'm good at. That's what I enjoy. That's what I love. I love troubleshooting. I love creating calm out of chaos, I suppose you could say. Um, and I really enjoy supporting small businesses because for me, you know, like you, this is the whole point, you know, you're talking about it's women's power hour. It's supporting small businesses, supporting UK based is primarily what I do. Um, and just, you know, helping us get on support. Most of my clients are women and it's just support supporting women to be fabulous basically I suppose love it I love it supporting women to be fabulous giving them the time to shine um I'm sure yes. you do so when did you actually start your business Hannah oh okay yeah so I started in July last year pandemic time um I'd already quit my job in the December prior and and I did a little bit of traveling and a bit of regrouping it, it actually turned out to be quite an opportune time because everything became a bit more virtual Yes. And actually opened up a lot more doors for me than maybe if we weren't in the Zoom world that we are now. Um, you know, I'd had to do a lot of face to face networking, but with I could go to five networkings in a day. I mean, it was exhausting. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but when I started, I was going to five networkings a day, you know, but it was a great start. It was great to get me out there and to get me out of my comfort zone, start meeting people. And it's just kind of grown from there. That is absolutely brilliant. And I have to ask you, although I know it was virtual, but how did you feel when you did your first sort of networking? Did you have to speak? Yeah, well, I wasn't sure. So I went to, um, I'm a member of a business club now. I was, it wasn't at the time. It's called Empower and it's based, it started in York. There, it's a female only group, which kind of made me feel a bit better. And the person who actually encouraged me to start my own business, who I used to work with, she was a member and she's also my first client. And she encouraged me to go along and I was told there was no pitching, but still it was daunting. And going into my first breakout room and where someone said, so what do you do? And I was like, um, I don't really know what I do. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, If anything, I'm honest. I'm not very good at, um, yeah, yeah not very good at pulling the wool over people's eyes. <laughs> I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Absolutely. Winging it. <laughs> I love that. because, And I ask because the very first business I had of being made redundant was as a virtual assistant and I yes, remember going to my first networking event and it was a face-to-face -face event and I was horrified I mean literally I was like what yeah. am I doing in this room it, it is and I think in the admin world you're kind of the back office aren't you I mean yes you answer the phone you're the customer service but you're the one that are kind of under the radar so you know although in my management roles I run meetings and things I wasn't you know, if we had any conferences at work, I was the person who was making sure they were running on time. I wasn't the person who was standing up to make a speech. Yeah. So to then have to be that person to voice myself, be the voice for myself is, was, yeah, quite an adjustment. Yes. Yeah. Being in the spotlight. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, an interesting one. Interesting. Absolutely. 
Excellent. Well, good. Well, you took the leap. You've, you, you're in it now and, and you've been doing this now for over a year. And I guess what I wanted to ask is, I mean, there are lots of women who are starting businesses or have businesses and they, they want to grow and progress. And perhaps even women who are, you know, in careers climbing up the ladder and just find themselves overwhelmed with the amount of things that they have to do. Mm-hmm. And because so many of those women also tend to say that they don't get to self-care because of all of these things that they have to do. So my question is, how can a VA help those women win back their time? Yeah, I have to say I'm nodding along and I realise it's a radio show, but um, I was nodding along to everything you were saying. It is really difficult and, you know, something that us women suffer from I think is uh, wanting to do it all or thinking we have to do it all the old adage and I I come across a lot of very overwhelmed people I spoke to someone actually only yesterday who has inboxes four inboxes that they're managing and about 40,000 unread emails and that's a lot of added stress that you don't even see even if it's from five years ago that that's adding a level of stress to your day every time you open that inbox you know to see sort of 30,000 emails in one inbox And she said to me, she goes, oh, am I a lost cause? And I'm like, well, no, of course you're not. There's no such thing as a lost cause. And, you know, it's the sort of thing that I come across Um, as a virtual assistant. We're not phased by this. This is this is what we do. This is what we live for. Um, I got very excited by 40,000 emails. I'm like, oh, what can I do? So that's the sort of thing, you know, that's one of the examples of one of the things that I can do. But one of the things that I want to put in place for her is to create a process so that when she gets her new emails, what is she doing with them? So it's not about dealing with the stuff before. It's also dealing with things coming in going forward um, and how to manage that and then and then that gives you more time because you, otherwise you're just going to end up back at square one it's all it's all good and well having a, a great few days and blitzing the house you know let's blitz the house spring cleaning and then three weeks later you haven't picked up the hoover well yeah. you're kind of back to where you were at the beginning so for me it's about putting those processes in place that enable people to just keep on top of it which then allows them the time to do the self-care to grow their business rather than sort of working deep in it they're able to work on the fun stuff and the ideas and the creativity loving that great okay Hannah well listen we're going to take a break Welcome back, everyone. This is the Women's Power Hour show. My guest today is Hannah, who is a virtual assistant and started her own business last year in the midst of the pandemic. So well done you for getting that started, let me tell you. Um, Now, Hannah was just sharing a bit about her own journey and some of the sorts of things that she might be able to do to help women in particular uh, who need some assistance to free up their time be that to grow their business be it for their self-care or any other thing that they want to spend more time doing Uh, now with that Hannah could you possibly share an example or two of, of where you've been able to help clients free up that time so you know they can take a holiday without feeling guilty or you know spend time with their family whatever those things are yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, one of the things that I noticed with friends and family who are business owners is that um, if they were taking time off or if I was away with them for the weekend or something, they could never switch off from the business. They always they have the laptop or their phone. They were checking the emails. Um, and as things become more online and we've got the social media, you're just constantly checking and seeing if there's something that you need to be doing. And so one of the services that I came up with originally was a holiday cover. So it's your out of office cover. And um, one of my clients in particular uh, does this a lot. And she has three children um, who are, what, eight to 13 now, I think. Sorry. So they're across primary school and secondary school. And um, while she has her own business, she needs to take time off in the holidays. I mean, she needs to take time off because we all need to take time off, let's be honest. Absolutely. But equally, you know, during the summer holidays or the half terms, you know, she wants to take time off and spend time away. You know, running your own business and look and having children is is very difficult. I I don't know. I don't have children of my own, but um, I I certainly know from friends and co- and clients of mine that it's it's no easy task. As someone who runs their own business without children, it's no easy task. <laughs> so to then take the holiday um, and just feel reassured that someone's looking after it. And so what I do is I um 
I manage people's inboxes while they're away. I will check in on their voicemails. I will engage and post on social media for them to make sure that any existing clients are looked after and any new inquiries that are coming through are like booked in for appointments um, and that there's a holding email that goes out to them as a minimum, you know, rather than them being ignored for a week or, you know, you're trying to sit down and have a pina colada and you're, you hear a ping on your emails. And it, it, the idea is to take that that ping away yes. from you. And yeah, she I mean, she recently went away over summer and she said um, it was the most relaxing time off she'd had since she started her business um, 18 wow. months ago. So I was really pleased to be able to do that for her. Fantastic. Um, and you know, there are, there are other things just, um, yeah, so email management is one of them, the big things for people who want to take time off um, and worry less. But again, it's having a system or a process in place. Uh, one of my clients, I do their email newsletters for them, which means that they can still keep in contact with their clients. They're still sending emails out to their email list every Monday. It's all automated and I set it up all for them. So they don't have to worry about that um, when they go on holiday about missing an email and maybe missing an opportunity. Yeah, fantastic. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because doing something like uh, a newsletter, you know, how do you become the voice of your client? That is difficult. And it's something that I've learned because I'm not a copywriter. I don't claim to be a copywriter, but certainly I found that as I've got to know my clients and it's something that I've started doing a lot more um, is that and my ideal client is someone who's quite similar to me, I think, which helps. Yeah. So my clients tend to be female service based business owners um, in their kind of 40s, because that's what I am. Um, and we speak the same language. So they understand what I'm talking about and I understand what they're talking about. And um, so it so it's quite easy to sort of slip into the the mind and what they're trying to convey and I feel so passionately about the businesses that I support that I all I want is for the messages you know and the products and the services that they're offering that I want to do the best that I can to promote them and make sure that you know the message is out there I guess yeah but that's but that's actually perfect isn't it because what you're talking about is obviously having that synergy with your clients and really understanding them probably before you even start working with them mm. so that when you take on those types of um, jobs those tasks you, you're already in a good place really absolutely nice excellent okay well we're going to take another little break and when we come back we're going to talk a little bit more about you and self-care everyone this is the women's power hour show my guest today hannah va extraordinaire sharing how she helps all these amazing women in business really giving them time to run their businesses efficiently to perhaps climb the career ladders if that's where they're at look after their families and have that precious and most needed time for themselves now hannah with that in mind given that you are constantly helping all of these amazing women win back the gift of time how do you manage yours so that you actually get your self-care in place that is a great question and um it's not always easy um i can't pretend that i have it all together at all but one of the things that i put in quite early on is to sort out my boundaries and i think that's really important to make sure that you've got your boundaries in place and that you're not responding to people at eight o'clock at night if you don't want to if, if your office hours are if you work till eight o'clock at night, that's fine if you've got, you know, sessions open till then. But if you have set office hours, stick to them, at least for your communication, because as soon as you start going outside of that, people will expect you to respond within minutes. I'll, I'll come back to emails again, because it really is my, <laughs> one of my passions. It's, you can put on your footer of your email, that your office hours, and you can say that you check your emails once or twice a day. And you can say when you check them, and you can say that you would respond to them within 24 to 48 hours um so something as simple as that is that you know I will check I work Mondays to Thursdays nine till four I check my emails at 10 a.m and at 2 p.m I will aim to respond to your email within 24 hours then people know what to expect from you yes and if you do want to do that work at eight o'clock at night that's fine but I would advise against sending the actual email until the next day um, until it's in your office hours I mean people do say something along the lines of um, I work these hours because it suits me, but you don't want to set a precedent is what I 
what I would say. Um, and you can delay send on emails and things like that. Yeah, so that's my biggest thing is about the boundaries. And I don't answer, I have a separate work phone. Um, it's just a pay as you go phone. Yeah. And I don't answer it in the evenings or weekends. It's, it's off. It's as yeah. simple as that. You can't call me at that point. Obviously, I take care of my clients and my existing clients. But I'm fortunate that my clients are all service based and all office hours. So yeah. the emergency would only be if I'd maybe done a typo on a social post. Um, and then I would rectify that immediately because that would be my mistake and it would need to be rectified. Yes. OK, so that's that's great. So you're really kind of putting those boundaries in place around your time. Uh, so, you know, when you're free and you're free of work and you don't have to be uh, responding necessarily uh, to clients needs. So what do you do for your self-care? What are your favourite things to do? I mean, quite a few of my favourite things fall around the lazy aspects. So eating good food, drinking fine wine, well, or just wine, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be fine. You know, I love I love TV. I'm a telly addict completely. And TV these days has really upped its game, hasn't it? Um, but I also like to run because, you know, you've got to keep a bit fit and healthy. And actually, it, it does release those endorphins. And I don't know if I get run as high, but I certainly get um, a sort of feeling of smugness that I've done the run, even if it's just smugness towards myself. Yes. Um, you know, when I'm just patting myself on the back. And I have to say, I've taken a couple of months off over summer of running because I've been training to do the Tough Mudder in Yorkshire. And uh, that's another thing that I need. I need a, a, a goal. If I don't have a goal, I won't go out and run. So that's sort of why I think I took the two months off. But I've started again running with my dog and she absolutely loves it. Um, and yeah, we have a great time. It's, you know, it's not always easy to put on the running shoes, but um, once I've done it, I feel brilliant for it. Yeah, totally hear that. I love running I love going out and being active however there are those moments where you just think oh today I could really not <laughs> yeah but, absolutely. but then you kind of you lock into but I know what the feeling's like at the other side of it so I'm going to do yeah. it anyway yeah that's it it's like I either do it now or I do it four o'clock this afternoon five o'clock and it's like no I'll just do it now get it over yeah. and done with there you go there you go excellent brilliant okay so um for those listeners who perhaps are struggling with their self-care what would you give as a, a top tip something that you would say if you do nothing else do this I say avoid comparison and that is hard that is not easy um social media is is a killer for it especially in business I find that um looking at people who have similar businesses to me and thinking oh wow aren't they brilliant um but Obviously, that's what you're projecting, what people are projecting. In my business, I'm projecting a professional, effective look because I am professional and effective. But equally, um, I have bad days and down days. And, and it's the same with fitness. I mean, we, I'm sure we all know that looking at models in magazines is not helpful for our body image. And so it's trying to avoid comparison. And then, you know, say it's in social media, if there are accounts that you're following that are actually turning out to be a bit toxic for you unfollow them or if you can't unfollow them because maybe they're you know someone in your network or they're a sister-in-law or something like that mute them and then you won't get notified of their posts um and and that'll hopefully help your mental health a bit more I said it certainly helped for me yeah and that's such an important thing because again self-care we talk about self-care and it is the physical the mental the emotional so actually taking doing those things and finding those things that look after our mental well-being are just so necessary we need to be protecting that so i think that, that's a, a fantastic tip that you have shared there hannah thank you so much for that So we are back. Final part of this lovely chat with Hannah, who has been sharing about being a VA, starting her own business, how she helps women in business really reclaim some of their time, but also ensuring that she protects her own. And I think that is such a, a key message here is that you're not surrendering your own self-care for the good of everybody else. So, and that is just so important, Hannah. Now, I am certain that there are 
probably women tuning in who have their own businesses or have really hectic careers or maybe just have really hectic home lives who might be thinking, gosh, there is stuff that I would love to give to somebody else, <laughs> like this wonderful woman, Hannah. So just how can they find out a bit more about what you do and how can they contact you? Well, that would be wonderful. Yes. So I am on all the sort of usual social media channels, um, not TikTok. That's that's a bit a step too far for me. I'm not brave enough. Um, I'm on LinkedIn under my name, Hannah Seastra. Um, I can't pronounce it either. Um, <laughs> Facebook is Balance VA Services, as is Instagram. Yeah, so my favourites are LinkedIn and Instagram. That's that's where I spend a lot of my time. And you can also uh, come to my website, which is www.balance-va.co.uk. Excellent. And I think you also have a blog on there as well? Yes, sorry. Yeah, I do have a blog just a monthly blog that I update with hints and tips. And I'm also running a, um, a social media thing at the moment, which is A to Z of productivity. So lots of tips about how to help you be more productive. Nice. I like that. I like that. So actually, even as a starting point, if people just want to get a little bit more of an understanding of what you do to go to the blog and perhaps have a look at some of the posts that you've already done, try and click into this productivity A to Z that you're posting at the moment. And then, hey, reach out to Hannah, time saver. I know, hand on heart, um, how amazing it is to have a VA. I know how um, critical it is, actually. I kind of want to say it's almost like a necessity if you're a woman in business to have that support. And, you know, not to get caught up in, oh, you know, what's the cost of? Because it will eventually save you money and time without a shadow of a doubt um so a full endorsement for me hannah got you back <laughs> thanks <Yvonne. laughs> um, but but so so important so if you've been listening you know please do reach out to hannah um, hannah it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show thank you so much for sharing your time your journey and your tips thank you so much for having me it's been lovely thank you